I am back with part four of how to bench press more weight. Now, this is the final episode of this series, so I hope you guys have enjoyed it so far. We've talked about, you know, bench press technique. We've talked about shortening range of motion. We've talked about accommodating resistance through bands and chains. And now for the fourth episode, we are going to talk about overload training. Now, overload training is simply what we've already been talking about. Overload training in this sense that we're talking about today is going to be through reverse band bench pressing or slingshot bench pressing. Now, these methods of overload training are methods that I use in my training program quite frequently. What these are gonna do is increase your neurological efficiency. So increasing the rate at which your muscle fibers can fire and how effective they are when they fire. Now, these methods are a little bit, you know, dramatic. Some people might call them extra. However, they are extremely essential to increasing your bench press. You do not want to stay bench pressing with a regular linear periodization boring program. Now, the reverse band bench press will look something like this. <laughs> see this exact same setup so it's very important a lot of people overload how much assistance they get whenever they're unracking the bench press I prefer to have zero assistance when I unrack the bench press this is going to ensure that I have that exact weight that's on the bar in my hands so similar to my accommodating resistance video part three of this series you will want to measure your band tension so that way you know how much assistance you're getting at the bottom of the lift. I will put the link to that video down in the description so that way you can see how to properly measure your band tension. Now there are two different ways that you can put the bands on the bar. I prefer to warm up just you know plate, quarter, plate, quarter, and then once I get to about 315, that's when I'll start adding the reverse bands. However, you can do it right from the jump. So you'll take that band and all you're gonna do is you'll put that band right there. The demo that you just watched is actually from our training session earlier this week. So this is actually set up to my exact rack height for the bench press. So like I said earlier, I prefer that there be no assistance at the top of the lift. So you'll notice when I unrack the bar, right? So that's pretty much where the bar is when I unrack it. This is loose, right? You see all that looseness? What you don't want is for the bar to be levitating like that. You don't want all of that assistance just holding up that bar. The bands that I prefer to use are from EliteFTS.com and I will put a link down in the description for you to check out those bands. And as you can see from this series, you can use them through accommodating resistance or what I like to refer to this to as is accommodating assistance. So progressively assisting you uh, as you go through the movement. The bands, you can use either these really long ones, just like this, or you can use the mini bands, the really small ones, right? The short loop. Now, you will just have to adjust the height of where the band is attached to in order to give you that assistance uh, throughout the lift. Now, the final tool that I'm gonna bring out in this series is the Mark Bell slingshot the mark bell slingshot is a phenomenal tool and it's something that i've been training with for i want to say probably about three years now i'll have to go back into my instagram and check that out uh, because i know i posted about it when i first got it so the mark bell slingshot there are several different kinds i'm not exactly sure off the top of my head which ones are for what but i know for example the one that i train with is the Mark Bell Mad Dog Slingshot. So the Mad Dog is a black one, and I don't think it comes in any other color, but that's for bench pressers over 400 pounds. So they rate the quality of the material 
based off of how much you bench. So you wanna actually look at that if you're gonna purchase them and see where you kinda of line up. You don't wanna get a mad dog slingshot if you're only benching 200 pounds because I honestly don't think you'd probably even be able to touch your chest with that. Now before I show you how to use the slingshot, I'm gonna go ahead and show you a video of me using the slingshot. Now the Mark Bell slingshot, it does also come in sizes. So this is an XL and it's actually my brother's. So I'm not sure that it's gonna fit, but I'm still gonna show you how to put it on. Um, so you take, now all you're gonna do is slide that on there. And I personally like to put it, you know, right above the elbow right there on that crease. You can move that up a little bit further if you want a little more assistance at the bottom. However, I prefer to get a little more assistance at the top of the lockout. That's why I put it right there. And then you'll go ahead and put the other arm in this one. If they are a little tight, you can wiggle it up like that and just maneuver it that way. So when you're bench pressing with a slingshot, you want to make sure that you have full control of the bar because the slingshot will provide assistance and will direct the bar into whichever way you allow it to go into. And so you're going to grab that bar, you'll come down, right? And then make sure that you have full control of the bar and push it up in the bar path that it should be in and don't allow it to come back. Now, if you lose control of the bar, that bar will shoot this way and it will come right above your face. So you wanna make sure, keep that lat tension, squeeze and just press away from the body, just like that, not towards the face. All right, you all, that wraps up episode four of how to bench press more weight. Now, I do wanna make it clear to you that overload training through these methods that I talked about today are definitely what I refer to as a more advanced method. So I highly suggest that you go through and follow this series as planned and start off with some of the shortened range of motion, then go into accommodating resistance, and then come into some of the overload work that I discussed today. That is exactly why I outlined this series to be this way, so that way you start off and progress through these methods. I hope you all enjoyed this series. And if you have any questions, go ahead and drop them down in the comments below. If not, go ahead and like and share this video with all of your lifting buddies, your spotters, everyone you know from the gym. And until next time, stay strong.